Alright, welcome back to Kazi's Cards. Uh, today we're going to be doing a little video on how I grade, some of the tools I use, some of the methods I use. I've had a few people ask me um, just how I do it, and I figure it's good to just throw that in a video. There's lots of videos like this out there that you can watch, but um, this is how Kazi does it. Uh, not that much different than probably most other people who who uh, do this, uh, who do grading submissions frequently, but um, just for the people who don't know and, and maybe haven't seen those videos, here's a couple tips for you. So I'll start with the tools that I use. So this is called the centering tool. Um, this one is from a company called Gem Mint. Uh, just happened to buy this one off eBay, I think it was around $10, but essentially it just has a grid on there with some number of values that you place over the card and it comes with a bit of a card chart um, so uh, these numbers will essentially co correspond with the ratio here um, and that ratio will tell you how centered or off centered it might be 50 50 obviously being the best centering that's what you want to go for um, for the centering uh, score on a card um, but, you know, there is a bit of a threshold with PSA, for example, uh, they do say that if it's within 60-40, it can still uh, qualify for a 10. So it doesn't need to be perfect 50-50, and that might be something you factor in um, when you're deciding to send cards in. If you're sending it to another company that does like the 0.5 um, grades, or 9.5 grades, rather, because PSA doesn't do 9.5s, uh, then this might be a little more relevant to you if you're trying to gun for like a pristine 10 or something like that. So uh, I will show in a sec just an example with the card. Um, but yeah, you can get that on eBay. I'll, I'll throw a link down for it um, just with the one that I used. So here, this is just a little jeweler's uh, lens, essentially. Um, magnifying lens has a flashlight you can't really see the light shining because i already well actually there you go um i do have the light on in this room but it's got the different magnifications um 30x 60x 90x uh, generally speaking the 30x magnification is is all you need if you use the smaller magnifications i mean like nothing's really gonna look good when you when you put it under 90x but um 30x is like a pretty good way if you can see some obvious flaws through a 30x um then you can know it, the chance of it getting a 10 is a lot worse uh mind you sometimes i send stuff in psa i'm not expecting a lot and then i get a 10 other times i expect it to come back good and i get a 9 or an 8 or something so it's not a perfect science but you know you want to give yourself the best odds and uh, to send things in to to gem and um, this is typically what I do, and I, I, I do have pretty good gem rates with my uh, sports card submissions, at least. Uh, stuff where I'm actually trying to, like, go for 10s and not just, you know, put whatever cards I have in a case. So here's the box that came in. I, I think this one was Amazon. Might have been eBay as well. I'll double-check that. Put that below. Um, it doesn't really have a company name. It's just made in China. Um, but that's what the box looks like. So we'll just grab a, a couple examples here. So I've got a Mark Stone Young Guns. Now, it might be kind of tough because I have a white wall background and the, uh, the side borders of this card are, are white. But um, if you look just with the naked eye, you can actually kind of see that it's off-centered uh, to uh, my left. Um, so, you know, the way to, to tell that is the white border on the right side is thicker than the le than the white border on the left side. It's not crazy off, right? But if, you, if you're paying attention and you have this card in hand, you can obviously see it. Um, there's lots of times where it's not that obvious. And then the centering tool is really going to help you. Um, in this case, it is fairly obvious um, with just a... a, a bit of a look through but i'm gonna try and hold this steady here 
Okay, there we go. So on the right side, the if you look um, where kind of the picture of the card starts right after the border, um, that pretty much lines up with the number four value almost. I know it's kind of hard to see there, but that lines up with number four. On the left side, it almost lines up with number two. Um, so that's a four to two ratio. If I go over to this chart here, that comes with the uh, that came with the, the centering tool, but I'm sure you can find a similar chart online if the one you buy doesn't come with it. Here's the four to two ratio. That's the 67-33 um, ratio, which is not good. That would not get a PSA 10 um, because um, P, uh, 10, PSA, like I said before, is about 60-40 ratio or better. That would um, qualify it for a 10 on the centering. So you see here at the bottom, bold numbers are likely to grade nine or better. All right, so this is not even a bold number. Um, if I send this in, you know, I, I've seen a lot of young guns of this year that have a similar kind of centering. So is there a chance that they're lenient um, on this year's young guns and, and this would still get a nine? Maybe, but like you're not getting a 10. So you have to factor that in. Like this isn't a card I would send in for grading personally, um, unless you just really wanted it. Um, graded for yourself but in which case maybe you can look for one that's already graded um, and, and just have some less risk there but that's pretty much how the centering works so um, it, grading typically uses four different criteria um, so one is centering in which I just showed you another one is the surface the corners and uh, the edges so actually, I'm gonna show you, just here's a label from Mint that I cracked out um, from a slab. Uh, and you can see the four criteria there, uh, corner surface, edge centering. That's pretty much what every company looks at at the end of the day. So yeah, I cracked out a uh, Jack Eichel Mint 9 that I'm gonna cross over to PSA. Here's a Josh Anderson OPG Platinum card. So OPG Platinum has uh, glossy surfaces. Uh, so they're pretty prone to surface issues. Any kind of print issues um, are pretty noticeable. Uh, so this is never a card that like anyone would grade anyways, but I just thought it was a good example um, to show, if I can get the uh, glare not to cover his face, but you can see along the uh, this line here, there's some kind of print defect um, that that happened in the printing stage. Like the quality control on uh, cards over the last, I'd say, two three years. Let's say three years. Um, has has been pretty shoddy on a lot of different products. Um, you know, the main series, uh, like Series 1 stuff, actually looked pretty okay this year around, thankfully, but the two years prior, like, it was pretty bad. Um, but uh, this OPG uh, 2021, uh, which actually only, I, I think this one only, this one's like a year lagged, so... Um, this OPG 2021, uh, which came out last year, it's, it's got all kinds of really bad um, quality control issues. I'll just show you another card here. You know, here's a terrible centering example, you know, just based on the same criteria I told you before. The, uh, the border here is way thinner than the border on that side. Um, so like just you get tons of off-centered cards in it but also just print defects so so uh, on the surface so you know glossy cards are already tough to grade on the surface because they're pretty prone to being scratched right just common sense um but this one also has like a pretty bad print line defect so if you saw something like that on a card that you wanted to send in um you know obviously don't expect a good grade or just don't send it in at all right um you know i don't mind getting my fingerprints on this one because i'm not going to do anything with it but 
uh, you, you're gonna want to inspect the surfaces on the light so um, the, the camera is actually like not doing a terrible job picking things up but even just with your with your own eye if you have these in hand um, you know inspect the surface pretty good use the magnifier uh, on the jeweler lens uh, to take a look at surface dings as well to help you out uh, so we covered centering we covered surface um, corners and edges can pretty much be uh, m closely grouped together there's still some different considerations there but here we've got a JT Miller canvas now canvas so long as the um, corners aren't dinged um, they're usually pretty good grading cards um, but this one has a slight white corner there. I'm gonna see if this works. Okay, this is... There we go. You can kind of see that it's white. Um, I apologize, it's really hard to... F <laughs> I'm looking through my camera um, versus what I see in person, and it's like really hard to um, appreciate this through the camera, but there's a little bit of white in the corner there. It's not significant, but it is it is a uh, slight defect. Um, so basically what you want to do with, with uh, any cards, you take a look at the corners, use a magnifier, go along the edges. Again, this is going to really not look great in the camera but you get the idea um, you want to go all the way around the card just see if there's anything going on there now the edges I, I mean edges can have similar problems there can be chips and flakes and imperfections along there uh, there could be scratches especially if they're thicker cards um, so you'll want to pay attention to stuff like that when you're picking cards uh, for grading, so I'm currently uh, looking at a bunch of cards today um, to make the uh, PSA um, <clears throat> sports sports grading special. So cards that I have chosen um, for grading, I put in one of these. Um, Graded card submission, uh, semi-rigid card holders, that is what they're called. Um, these ones are from Ultra Pro. Uh, I'm sure there's a few different brands, but this is typically the one that I find. And then I'm just gonna grab one of my cards here that I plan on sending in. So this is a Josh Norris Priority Signings out of 25. Um, this I pulled from one of the black promo packs at the uh, Fall Sports Card Expo. Uh, from 2023 uh, so you know it's a really nice card and obviously it's limited um, and it's of a decent player too on a decent market team I'm not gonna say decent team sorry sense fans uh, not this year maybe next year but um, you know I shouldn't laugh anyways uh, it's still an awesome card I, I love this card a lot um, it would. It, I, I kind of just want to grade this for myself. I don't even want to sell it. Uh, but last year, I got a Michael Bunting of these um, from. Or sorry, not last year, but the year before that, when I went to the expo, I uh, got a Michael Bunting, which I'm going to fish out of my pile real quick. So that was priority signings <clears throat> from the year before. Uh, this one was one out of twenty-five. Uh, so a little, a little better on the numbering there, but it came back a nine, which I'm pretty happy with, and um, I'm expecting this one to come back a nine as well, uh, just because one of the corners, again, hard to appreciate this uh, on the camera, but one of the corners, oh, no, actually, there's a square. Didn't look fantastic, but it still looked pretty good. Um, there's also a bit of a, uh, sorry, hard to see here, but a bit of a red mark just at the bottom there. See how 
much I can zoom in without this going crazy. Bit of a mark there. I couldn't get that mark off just by wiping with the microfiber cloth. But yeah, so when you have the raw card in hand, uh, you do want to use a microfiber cloth so um, to just gently brush the surface, get any um, you know specks of dust off there because that will affect the surface grade. Then you put it in a um, penny sleeve. So another thing I use um, are uh, grading easy grade sleeves. So sorry, I got like a bunch of stuff in my hand here, but these easy grade sleeves they have a little bit of a um, of a uh, opening in the corner, and uh, let me grab one of these out. I know that there's other ones that just like basically have the corner cut off and I, I honestly find those easier than to use than these um, but you can see here there's a little slit there into the back so you can just slide a card um, actually I'm just gonna slide this in all right so uh, this is not a card I'm getting graded but I'm just gonna show you so You can uh, separate the plastic there a bit and you slide it in and then you just peel that over and it, it can go through. Um, you can still, with these ones, I find I could still end up catching on this little uh, flap here. So these ones aren't amazing, but what you can actually also do is uh, grab any penny sleeve and either with an X-Acto knife you cut out um, one of the sides so that it just flaps open or you just cut the corner uh, and then you basically make your own easy grade sleeves but I just happened to buy a bunch of these already uh, so I'm, I'm just gonna use them uh, you know there's they're not bad to use but but um, they're not my favorite things ever but anyways, this one's already in uh, sleeve. So we got our Ultra Pro um, holder here. Basically, you just squeeze the two sides of it like a little pocket. Oh, and it's actually very hard, annoying to do sometimes, but you squeeze the sides a bit like a little pocket, and then you just slide the, the card down the top, slightly uh, ease up on your grip as the card slides down so that it fits nicely. And then there you go. Now it's in a uh, it's in a holder, and that's ready to be packaged up and shipped out. And there you go. So that's basically how I prepare cards to get graded. First, to just evaluate them if it makes sense um, just from a quality perspective if it's good enough to send in obviously uh, if you're trying to sell these you're going to want to look up what the value of the card sell graded so i like to look at psa 8 9 10 values 8 being your worst case scenario um, most of the time most of the time for modern cards um, but if you're looking over the cards well, you shouldn't get too many back as an 8. I've only had like 4 come back as an 8. Um, modern cards actually, 4 come back as an 8 um, out of like 100 cards that I've sent in um, for myself personally. and uh, Which is pretty good, like most of them I actually get 10 and then, uh, and then a large chunk of them will also get 9s. But... Basically, if you, if you can, um, if you look at the prices and the PSA 9 will make you about break even when you factor in the cost of the card and the grading, then that's not a bad uh, risk to to send in. And it, obviously, if you end up getting a 10, then it could be much more valuable than that, uh, depending on the card. So you got to do a little bit of evaluation there. But once you do those evaluations, uh, you clean up the card, you put them in one of these uh, and then you then you're ready to submit. So 
I'm going to have a submission going out before the end of January. Um, expecting about a three month turnaround there. So hopefully, um, hopefully we get some good grades and uh, it'll be a mix of uh, sports cards and TCG. So actually, just sent, pick up my pre piles here. So I've already got a handful of them in the uh, holders and um, this is like not even half of it yet. Um, I might not send every single one of these in there in, but you know, there's the Josh Norris. Um, there's a Jack Eichel Young Guns that I just cracked out of the mint slab. There's a Gabe Velarde Pack Wars Black, which looks really nice. Um, you know, these ones you really gotta check the surface too. There's a Bunting Young Gun, there's um, Game Data Moments, Matthews. Yeah, a bunch of different things, you know. I, I, you'll you'll see all these cards when I get them back from PSA, and, and you see what the grades are. But got a bit of work to do today.